Welcome back everyone, my name is Kuden, and today I'm doing a couple of little tutorial videos for Warframe. So, <clears throat> I know a bunch of you have started playing Warframe recently, and I'm going to be here to have you guys out with a few little quick tutorials. Basically what I do, to show you how I usually roll my characters and such, and show you what kind of mods and other equipment stuff is out there. Okay. So pretty much all of you are familiar with stuff like the Foundry. You know, use your use key and you open it up and it gives you all the stuff you're ever going to make. Now, with the mod station, I know some of you have don't have this yet, but a couple little things you're just going to get into starting off with. These mods are pretty much the end all be all of all of your powers and everything else. So, when it comes to these mods, they come in three qualities, well, four now. So, these tan ones, so these brown ones are common, silver so are uncommon. If you go all the way over here, golds are rare. And then finally, you have what are called ribbon mods. Now, those are very different mods that you guys won't have to worry about for a long time. They're end game, kind of like uh, they're mods you have to, once you get them, you have to unlock them doing a challenge. Uh, I know some of you had questions about how to improve them and how to do other stuff. So, as you can see up top, you have your credit up in the um, top left hand. And over here on the right, above in the Antian Treasures, you have your Endo. Endo is the material you need to up the second material you need to upgrade your uh, your mods and stuff. So let's actually take a look. So some of these you can see have look like they're cracked. Do I still have something that look like they're cracked? I'm not sure. No, I don't think I do. But on the actual card itself, you actually see like cracks on it, like glass cracks. Those are damaged mods that you usually get in the very beginning areas. You only want to hang on to those until you have the actual versions. Now up here you can see the menu of Fusion, Transmute, Cell, and Dissolve. Fusion allows you to whoops, allows you to take one of these mods, so you select one, and you can see how it highlights these. So Fusion, you click on the Fusion, and it's going to give you this menu. Now it shows you what the percentage is for what it can do, so Pressure Point does 20% more melee damage. And it can tell you what the drain is on the left side here. Now, it's unranked, so it has no rank at all, and then these little pips are highlighted. But as you boost it up, the little pips light up. And you can see how the, the effects of ranking up increase the bonus it gives you, as well as increasing the drain. Now on the right here, it's going to show you what it costs for credits to upgrade and endo. Now you can apply the fusion or cancel it. I'm just going to uncancel that real quick. Now, transmute. Let's grab four of these. And you can grab more than, more than one. So what you can do with multiple ones is you can transmute it. You take four unranked mods, so mods that have no rank or brand new. They don't have any pips on them. And you can turn them into a higher rarity mod. You can sell it for credits, or you can dissolve it into endo. So let's see what happens if I transmute four of these. Bleeding Edge. Okay, so that's an arc wing melee ability, or mod. It gives plus 10 critical damage as unranked, but you can see the bottom has a ton of pips. Let's see what happens when we do four of these melee prowess ones. Transmute for 12,000. Rupture! Meh. Now, let's see what happens when we take, uh, let's see, a rare mod. What rare mods don't I ever need? Mm -hmm. I don't use Fired Up. That's a, it's a Sentinel specific mod. Let's see what happens. Transmute for 36,000. Okay, let's see what happens. Steel fiber. Oh, God. We got a common, but okay. It's it's a chance you take. 
Um, let's see. How about? Let's try one more. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Reflection. Oh, cool. So that's a Warframe mod. It's plus 60% damage taken is reflected when blocking attacks with channeling. Now, channeling is something we'll get into a little bit later. Now, the other thing on the little mod cards you can see is on the top right-hand corner. So it has a number, which is the drain, and a symbol. Those symbols are called polarity. If you match up the polarity on between that symbol and whatever you put it on in a slot on a weapon or your Warframe, it costs half as much to equip. Now, if it's on a blank slot, it just costs its base number. And if it's on a slot that's not matching the symbol, it costs one additional drain on your Warframe or weapon. All mods accounted for, Operator. I have not taken any. Okay, so let's take a look. Right now, I'm running Rhino. Rhino is a very buff and heavy frame. Now, you can see all the equipment and all the gear and everything. Now, on the bottom right here, you're going to see his base stats. Armor is what have it gives you damage reduction after your shields go away. Energy is your energy to use abilities, health, shield, sprint speed. Now, the other four, duration, efficiency, range, and strength. Duration is a percentage of how how long your abilities can last. If it's an instant cast, like Volt Zap, that doesn't do anything. It only affects abilities that have a time length on them. Like... Um, a Volt Speed. Like, his speed has a duration attached to it. If you increase the duration on your Warframe, it increases how long that sprint will affect everybody. Efficiency means that every oh excuse me every single one of your abilities costs energy. Efficiency reduces the amount of energy each one costs to cast. Range is pretty simplified. It's how far or how big an area your abilities could affect. If it's not something that is only affecting you or doesn't actually have a range attached, it doesn't do anything. And then there's strength. Determining how much damage attack abilities use, or how effective other abilities are. Like Trinity, her healing abilities are based on strength. So the higher the strength, the more healing she does. Now right now I just have Rhino equipped, he's like 28. And let's take a look. Okay. So, up at the top, you see all these slots. Now at the top you have these two special slots. The first one is called an Aura. Now, auras are, they affect everybody or the area around you to do stuff. Let's see, let's take a look at a few of them. So, here we go. These affect everybody. So, let's say, loot detector. Your minimap shows loot crates, plus five loot radar. That affects everybody. It allows everyone to, who have, to see loot drops and containers. Now, when it says plus five, if someone else has a mod that has loot radar, this enhances it. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Uh, rejuvenation. The entire team regenerates three points of health a second. And that's everybody. Now, the thing is, if multiple people have the same same auras on, they don't all stack in equal amount. So there's a diminishing return. So if you have four people with regen rejuvenation, it's not going to heal at 12 points a second. It's going to heal around like eight or nine overall. Uh, let's see. Now the other one. The other one is called an Exilius mod. These are mods that change something about your Warframe. So one of the main ones I run is Rush. Increases sprint speed. There's also other ones called Coation Drift, which increases the aura strength and aura of effectiveness. So it'll increase the strength of your aura, the one that you've equipped, increases the amount of stacking that's allowed per aura. Uh, there's other stuff like Retribution, which when something hits you with a melee attack, you hit by electricity. Another one that's always fun is Maglev, which increases the distance you can slide and makes you slide faster when you're doing that bullet slide. And there's mo Mobilize. 
So immobilize increases the speed of your bullet jump, which is that when you're sliding and you go into a jump. And aim glide and wall latch. So aim glide is that when you zoom in, you slow down, you're falling. And wall latch is you can literally stick to walls. And I'll be able to show you guys that later. Uh, let's see. Now you can also see that on several of these slots there's that little, that little tick mark. So let me show you how that works. So let's go with a one they usually use which is called armored agility which is increased sprint speed and gives armor so if i put it normally it costs 11. if i put it in the bad one it costs 14. or if i put it in the right one it costs six as you can see it lights up now most of the ones you want to use, I have something called Prime Flow, which is just a better version of the mod called Flow that I'll probably love you have. Always want to run that. It increases your energy. Always want to increase your energy. Now, as you can see, with Rhino, his health and shields, his shield's higher, but I have an ability called Rhino Armor, which gives you complete immunity to all damage for as long as it holds, kind of like a, a skin that gets, needs to be shot off before you can use it. Now, that's based off of strength. So I can put on a Tensify to increase the ability strength, giving him more armor. And let's see what else. What else? What else? What else? Continuity is always good because in well, not continuity. Let's see. Where is it? It's called. Let's see. Streamline. There it is. Increases ability efficiency. And you can see it changes there. Uh, let's see. See, so I have this one here called Augur Secrets. It's a part of the Augur set, which you guys can get on Cetus, or Earth. Uh, increases ability strength. So I'll further increase my strength of my ability, making my armor even stronger. Let's see. What else? What's that other one I had? Uh, there's the Vigilante set. Now, the thing with sets is, you see a little tick mark? That means you have the first pip. So, set bonus 1 out of 6. If I were to equip Augur Message, you see the second pip pop up. You can apply those those sets to anything. It includes weapons, your Warframe, even your melee weapon. And your little, your little buddy, too. So, if it has the same, like, title, like Augur, and you apply it to anything, it will count towards a set. Where is that one mod I always use? Let's see. Ah, Iron Shrapnel. So some of these are called Augments. So they change the way your powers work, and you guys will actually get access to those soon by going through some of the faction or the syndicate quests, which are syndicates are little factions that they kind of not all agree with each other, so you can gain reputation with some, not all. And each one gives different rewards based on your reputation with them. So what this does is, when I have Iron Skin, to, when I cast Iron Skin, I can recast it, basically hit it again, and cause it to detonate, dealing 100% of its remaining health as puncture damage. Now I'm going to explain pun on damage types in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Also, I'll equip Power Drift to my Exilia slot there. And let's see which aura do I really want to go with. Oh, it's a checkmark aura. Let's see. Oh, yes. Also, with auras, they actually those actually give you more slots to use, like more capacity to use on your Warframe. Let's see. By... Sort by rank? Okay, here we go. New alert marked on navigation channel. <sighs> I mean, rifle amp is always good. Increases the rifle damage by 27% for everybody. And as you can see, when I put that in, I get more capacity. So you can see my rank is 28, but I actually have 70 points of capacity. And that's both because of the little reactor, which you can install, which doubles your capacity, as well as the aura of rifle amps bonus. So it gives you 14 because of the little check mark, doubling it seven giving you way more capacity. Let's see, what else do I want to have? 19, let's see, I usually go with, uh, let's see. Steel fiber, this is my armor, 
So when my shields go away, I get more damage resistance and vitality. Which I could probably upgrade at some point. Now I have seven points left, and I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I mean, we could put in something lower in there. Let's see. And you can only put an aura in the aura slot, but the ones in the Exilius, you can put in any slot. They just, they can fit into, the new ones that can fit into that specific slot up there. Okay. I mean, that's 11, no. Actually, let's start by drain. It's a little easier. Seven, what well, it costs seven. Ah, let's just do Thieves' Wit. Fuck it. I mean... Oh, no. Reinforcing Stomp. That's what I wanted to do. So, <clears throat> it's another augment. So, whenever I, if I hit my Rhino Stomp, it replenishes the Iron Skin Health by a certain amount for each enemy it hits. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do there. From most frames, you're going to want to have Flow... You want to have at least flow and streamline, basically allowing you to cast more and cast more often. And depending on you want intensify or you want continuity, which increases the duration. It all depends on what kind of abilities your Warframe has and what kind of Warframe you want to play. Again, you could also equip stuff like Rush and Maglev and Mobility, or Mobilize, to get to become like stupid mobile and harder to hit. Now on weapons. So for weapons, whoops. The main thing you want to equip is serration. Serration will increase all of your all of your damage. It's the must have. You always want to have that. Now the other one you guys recently got from one of those boss missions, I believe is split chamber. Now what split chamber does, it does something called multi shot. That means whenever you fire your gun or any other weapon, it has a chance of adding an additional bullet onto that firing. Means is you can basically it basically automatically doubles your damage overall. So watch. So with serration it does 150 percent. So all of them go up to 19, 19, and 20 damage. 15, 15, and 15. Basically, it just doubles it. Now, other ones you want to do, so you can actually combine the various kinds of elemental types. Let me actually get a weapon that has enough slots to do that so I can show you. Let's see. Let's go with the Soma. Just remove all. And then go out and then back in to show you. Okay, base stats. Accuracy. So. Accuracy is, again, the spread of the weapon. Critical chance is the chance that your bullets or damage would do extra damage based on your critical multiplier there. So this gun has a 30% chance on any hit to do three times as much damage. For, for, uh, uh, fire rate is, again, how many bullets it fires in a minute. Uh, magazine, the noise. So noise, there's just two settings. Alarming and silent, at least right now. And if you have a silent weapon, Enemies won't hear gunfire and won't be alerted as much as loud weapons. Reload is how long it takes to reload. Riven disposition, don't worry about that, that's end game right now. Status. Status is the chance that any one of your damage types that's on the weapon will have a secondary effect. So, let me just open up a wiki so I can read verbatim as to what damage types do. That way you always have the best stuff. <clears throat> Here we go. So, the first damage types you have, you can see there are impact, puncture, and slash. So, puncture is, punct those three are under physical damage. <laughs> so, impact has a chance to stagger an enemy. Basically, knock them around and so they'll basically stop attacking puncture has a chance to decrease the amount of damage they do say allows you to, and that can stack up to four times 
and Slash puts a bleeding effect on them. Now, the other damage types. See, Cold acts as a slowdown for enemies. Electricity can either chain to other enemies that are nearby the main one you hit and stun them. Heat does a fire damage over time, like sets them on fire, and has a chance to panic them. As in, they'll stop what they're doing and just freak out and run around. And finally, there's toxin damage. Toxin damage does a damage over time directly to health. It bypasses shields entirely, which is good against, like, the corpus. Now, there's finally combined elements. So you can actually combine the cold, electricity, heat, and toxin into secondary kinds. So, let's go through those. First one's going to be Blast, which is when you combine heat and cold. Blast's status effect is a knockdown. It basically knock them on the ground. Corrosive, which is you combine toxin and electricity, and it can actually reduce an enemy's armor by a certain percentage that can stack up to four times. Gas, which is heat and toxin, causes a toxin gas cloud to spawn on the enemy or come from the enemy itself. And it does damage over time, directly to health. Magnetic damage, which is cold and electricity, reduces the maximum shield energy enemies have. So if they have a, a big shield, you can actually strip that off of them. Radiation, which is heat and electricity, reduces accuracy of enemies, making them fire wildly, as well as making them able to hit their own friends with their gunfire. And finally, there's viral, which is cold and toxin, which reduces the max health of an enemy. Now, you can... The way they're combined is from left to right. So... Let's see, um, if we combine Cryo Rounds and Hellfire, you'll see Blast show up. And you can see little symbols of Fire and Ice. Now, if we were to add Infected down the bottom, it would say Blast and Toxin, because the first two are already combined. Now, if we flip to an Infected clip with Cryo Rounds, you're going to see Gas and Cold. That's how you combine damage types. Now for this gun, which is the Soma, it's a high crit- 30% uh, base critical chance on a weapon is very high. There's only one weapon that has higher, which is called Dread, which is a weapon that drops from the Stalker after you kill him, or if you kill him. Now, I'm going to show you guys how I usually build most guns like this. So, I take a look at it, say, okay, it has a good critical chance, decent accuracy, and a good critical multiplier. I've already formed the hell out of this thing four times already, which is up at the top where it says Soma rank 30. That little four with the star shows you how many times you've reset it to zero rank and adding a symbol. Now, first, I always add serration. And then I add split chamber. Now, split chamber has the added bonus of adding more status, but I don't really care about that since it's only right now 12%. Now, the other ones I add see. Where is it? Actually, let's go here. I'm going to add on Point Strike, which increases the critical chance by 150%. Now, that's multiplying, not adding. So it's going to multiply the critical chance by 150%. So that should be like 60 and then 15, 75? Yep! So it increases the critical chest up to 75%. Now, I'm going to add Vital Sense, which increases the critical damage by 120%. Now that's going to increase the critical multiplier up to 6.6 .6 times. So it has a 75% chance to do 6 and then 6.6 .6 times as much damage as normal. Now, let's see, what else did I usually Tenno, add? Tenno, there's a time-limited mission alert available. Check navigation. Yes, Mom, I'll do that later. Uh, let's see. Thermite rounds. That's also a good one, too. Let's see. Hmm. Did point 
strike. There's wildfire. Let's see. What else did I usually add? Let's see, let's see where is it? Point strike. I'm sure I saw tooth clip. Where is it? There's hammer shot. And now uh, the hammer shot also increases critical damage. But the thing is, it increases it by the base amount, not the modified amount that's already that you can already see. So let's put that on. And you can see it goes up to 8.4%. And it also bumps up the status a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. Now this weapon does the the highest damage value it has is slash. So I like to add in Fang for full side, which is uh, another rare mod you can get later on. I can put that on. Increases the slash damage up to 62.7. Again, boosting up the damage it does. Uh, let's see. I can also add Satu Clip if I want to increase its slash even more. But why do I have another check? What was that one? Uh, you know, uh, I can usually do wide fire or thermite rounds. Because that increases status, that increases magazine. Now uh, let's just do magazine up to 120 and it adds heat damage. Now I have 15 slots left for something. I can put on shred, which does punch through. Now punch through, that means that's a measurement in meters. How much stuff a bullet can go through before it stops. Now, that means if there's 1.2 meters of stuff in your way, that means the bullet will go right through and hit whatever's on the other side. And I can actually put that on. It also increases fire rate. This is how I usually build weapons like this. Again, you could also gear your weapon towards status effects, larger magazine, higher punch through, stuff like that. Now, let's see. Furious, uh, my sidearm is basically the same thing. Melee weapons. Oops. So, melee weapons, as you can see, I've already modified this one a little bit. So, at the top there, that's your style. Now, styles are what you use when you have your melee weapons equiped by themselves. You hold on, hold down your, your, your switch weapons button, and you'll pull out your melee weapons by themselves. Now, if you do, like, fighting combos, so look at this. If you do these in the way they're supposed to be done, they do a lot of damage. So let's take um, Ambush Predator or Rapid Incisions. They allow you to do more damage faster and allow you to do it to more enemies. Now, when you're in melee only mode, you have something called your melee counter. Now, the more kills you get in quick succession, the amount, the increased amount of damage your melee weapons are going to do. So, basically, if you have like a kill streak of 50 or 60, sometimes you can get that multiplier up to like four and five times. So that means you're doing four or five times as much damage as you would normally do automatically, just right out of the gate. Now there are now when you if you stop attacking or stop getting kills that counter will reset to zero now there are some mods that allow it to last longer out of combat or de uh, decrease slower those are more rare mods but the whole idea between um from melee weapons is the faster you can kill enemies the more reward you're going to get now let's see Now, let me go on a mission and show you some of what I'm talking about. I'm going to equip my Sum Prime and my Dex Furus, which are maxed out, and these Dual Kyrias. Now, I have a little companion called Worm, as well as a couple others. Upgrade him, and they have their own mod slots. They have Guardian, which is a really good one. 
boost your uh, your shields to 100% when it runs out. Now these have their own cooldowns. Uh, now I'm not 100% sure what the cooldown is, but they have one. Shield Charger has that's every 10 seconds. Warrior is makes it a, tells them to a, how to attack and when to. Sanctuary is a must-have for all your companions. Now what it does is it creates a shield with 450 health around the player when they are reviving fallen allies. Um, regeneration, which I believe is what Josh wanted to know about. Basically, regeneration is if your little guy dies, he can come back with regeneration. Now, I have prime regeneration. It means if killed, he regenerates up to two times. The first time he dies, he comes back, gets dead a second time, comes back. Third time, he's gone forever. And that's kind of how regeneration works. And it comes back with a certain amount of health. Now, your companions have their own weapons that operate exactly like the weapons you have. So they're a, they're a type, and they have their own slots and everything. Oh, and don't forget. So down here in the bottom, that little symbol with the head on it shows that that mod is currently equipped to your Warframe or one of your Warframe's weapons. So it can actually tell you which ones are currently in use. So you don't have to go keep checking. Okay. Uh, and this is my kitty cat. So this is a Kavat. Oops. So when you get your animal, they're actual a living creature. Now, all living creatures, since they're not technically um, really engineered to be perfect, they ha they lose health over time. And if their health, this little health bar reaches zero, they kind of dissolve, I think. I don't know how they explain it. But you can buy these DNA stabilizers for credits in the market, and you just have to use it once in a while. Now, loyalty. You can actually interact with your creatures. Watch this. Interact with them. Good kitty. Oh, he's a good kitty. That's a good girl. Oh. See? Now, if you haven't interacted with your pet in a while, it will have a lower loyalty and do less damage. Because it's not so excited to be with you. So always pet your pets. Like, scratch their tummies, play with them, all sorts of things. I should actually not go down there because there's spoilers down in the back into your ship. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, menus. So, if you hit like escape, you're gonna see all of these like uh, market, communication, your quest, your profile, options, and stuff. So, equipment, arsenal. Gets you right to here. To uh, your your customization. Navigation. Seeing the whole world, the, the, the solar system. Um, go back into equipment. Foundry is your foundry. Incubator is where you breed your dogs and your cats. Inventory. So, inventory is all the items that you have. So it can be sorted up at the top, and you can actually pull these down to be sold Basically to NPCs. Uh, let's see, so you can sort them by like appearance items, which are just cosmetics. Um, let's see, prime parts, which you want to hang on to prime parts because you can actually turn those into a special kind of currency later on that you need for this guy, this merchant who comes around every weekend. Uh, mod, uh, void relics. So these are your relics. These are the ones I know a lot of you have been getting. So on the side here, it shows you all your possible rewards. Now, when it comes to refinement, it requires something called void traces. They're just another resource that you get doing void missions in general. So even if you don't have relic, you can go do them and earn void traces. Now, you can refine them to be any of these higher qualities. So, uh, exceptional, flawless, and radiant. Now, you know, when I mouse over them, you can see the percentage of the rewards change. So that if you want something on the common end, you leave it alone. If you want something on the higher end, you refine it to radiant. It gives you 
pretty much a, almost a 50% chance of getting that one thing there. Tenno, there's a time-limited mission yes, alert. Yes, Mom, available. I get it. Check navigation. I get it, Mom. Oh, no. Uh, abilities, specters. Oh, landing craft. So, this is something that you guys could do pretty much just like, hey, look, I'm going to decorate stuff. So, you can customize it, select the landing craft because there's actually th three different. There's the one you have. There's, let's see. Yeah, there's the Lisette, which is what you start out with. There's the Scimitar, which is each one you get this thing called a basically a landing craft um, consumable. It allows you to use your la your landing craft's ability once every 10 minutes. So a scimitar. Air support carpet bombing. Order drops bombs in a line from your position to the beacon you placed. Yeah. The Lisette uh, override. Orders hacks into enemy systems and disrupts security protocols for a short period. So that can basically, if you don't want to um, do like a console or on spy missions, if the timer is counting down, like you've set off alarms, you can actually do this override support and it'll pause the timer. Uh, Zephos Sentry Gun. Oh, I have this guy. Okay. Basically, the turret uh, drops a turret down, then a fire upon nearby enemies for you. Now, this only changes the outside look of your ship, not the inside. And then finally, the Mantis, which drops a med tower, a medical turret that pulses healing waves to help allies. Now, if I select this, there we go. Now. see customize so you can customize the outside random colors and liveries are just like other skins so let's see uh, rando 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 Ooh. I like that. And interior colors. So you can add this is actually like the interior colors of your ship. Uh, let's see. Accents. Let's change the accent. Ordis did not think the operator could be more attractive. Wrong again, Ordis. There you go. I like that. I'm actually a fan of having it Oricon themed, like these other guys. So these are these things are the, the statues you can pick up. They're perpetual motion machines that are powered by the stars you guys keep picking up. So, like, you can see, like, there's a little, like, anti and stars, the side ones, and the top there is a little amber one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Market. So, market, you can literally buy just about anything. You can buy blueprints. You can buy parts. See, um, skins, animation sets, equipment. Let's see. Um, so let's see. Primary weapons. Yeah, the velt. You can actually get the velt instead of having to purchase it for platinum. You all you'd have to do is wait for one of the research labs in the dojo to be done, and we can pretty much be able to research that. So anything you can't, any blueprint you can't buy here can be researched. But again, the, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, researched. Recipe for Daiku can be researched in the Tenno Lab Dojo room. Okay. It tells you where exactly you need to go to get it. Lens. Let's see. Lens. Uh, research the Energy Lab Dojo. 
and so forth. Oh, uh, let's see what else. All right, communication. Uh, so your inbox, basically all the messages you get from the Lotus and Ordis and other people is gonna be in here. Uh, clan, uh, let's see all the clan and actually enter the clan dojo from here. So you actually hit the clan dojo. It looks like uh, someone's on. And the clan log actually tells you everything that's going on, like what is being constructed, what needs help, etc. Okay. Oh, actually shows our little clue and showcase. So there's Luna, Stamos, Remorse, and Ezekiel in the back there. Which I didn't know there was a little, there was a little showcase in the beginning. Uh, it's the stats, which I don't think have updated yet. Huh. Equipment. Equipment shows all the research we've done, like all the stuff that we have. Oh no, equipment shows all the stuff that people have used, which I don't see any, that's weird. Okay, I guess it hasn't updated yet. And then the Tenno Lab, which research shows all the stuff that we have or don't have. And then finally friends. You can join sessions, add friends, see who's online. Pending. Uh, let's see. Oh wow! So people are already rank three. Nice. And then quests. You can actually see all the quests that you have and have completed. There's a lot of them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you guys will get all of these. And the last part is factions. So, these are all your factions, your syndicates. Now, each one, again, gives their own benefits and their own mods and weapons and other rewards. So, the syndicates, hey you guys. You set the example for the rest of us. So, this is, these are the guys. It shows the, the ranks, what you get for ranking up in each one as well as who they're enemies, who they're opposed, and who they're allied with. So if you're, they're allied with someone, they get you get reputation, a little bit of reputation with them whenever you do stuff for the Arbiters. So, offerings. Perhaps these will show you the path. So you can get sigils, you can get some parts for weapons, you can get specters, which are little NPC warriors that you can bring with on missions with you. Uh, let's see, different kinds of mods. There's blueprints for the, what I usually use, which is the energy restore all the time. So if you guys get 25,000 standing, I believe it's the second rank on these guys, you guys can buy this blueprint and use it. Um, you can get like little sculptures. Again, some really cool mods. Let's see who, let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. So the Arbiters have mods for Volt. So they have stuff like um, Capacitance. It's a discharge argument, which is your fourth ability. Converts 3% of damage dealt into your uh, damage dealt to enemies into your shields split between Volt and Allied Tenno. So between you and all your friends, whenever 3% uh, of all damage you do with your discharge gets added to your shields. Now that can actually increase your shields past their maximum, but only up to twice your maximum amount of shields because it's an overshield and there's a max to that. Now they have specific weapons as well as what's called scenes. Now scenes are there for the, the uh, picture taking like utility. So you can actually go in and take high resolution pictures and like screenshots of your Tenno in different positions, doing different stuff and like use them however you want. Now these are scenes that allow you to put yourself somewhere else. Is that just a standard area? <coughs> I'm gonna show what happens when you're on the bad end of one of these guys. The probability of us working together has converged on never. <laughs> a lot of sass. So you see my uh, my rank my uh, standing is negative forty four thousand. It means they hate me. 
Now, on the bottom here, it says liability and write-off. Now, what that means is, depending on how many missions I do in a day, there's a chance that they'll send one of these after me. Usually it's the the negative two, which is the MOA extra, um, Extremis Platoon. So it's 16 MOAs that all have a special ability attached to them. And they're extra tough. Now those could spawn whenever. And, but the thing is, you'll know it's coming because during the mission, you're going to get a little message pop up in your lower right hand corner. Basically, they're saying, We don't like you, we're setting stuff to kill you. Have fun. That was close. I'm just so used to walking around my ship with like la di da going on. So I think that runs through most things that I can think of. If, they, if I missed anything at all, just, you know, tell me and I'll be able to do like another video or something else for you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, um, I did forget something. Okay, so here we go. Matchmaking. So, you see all that up the top left hand corner says matchmaking public. This is before you get in any mission. So, public, friends only, invite only, or solo. I usually do public, so I just, you know, hop in with a bunch of people just to go around. Now, over here in the top left, the top right hand corner, alerts. Alerts are timed events that you go and you get that reward. Um,. They can range from special resources to cosmetic helmets. Invasions. So, invasions are interesting. You either choose to help one side or the other. Either Grenier or Corpus. And you get battle pay for helping them. Now, with that, on the bottom, it shows a pretty much a rank of how far like special events are. So a Formian is a giant doom ship, the Grenier build, to take out one of these special relays to go and destroy it. That's bad. Razor Bakamata, same thing, but the Corpus. So depending on how much people do to help out one side or the other, allows these other really bad events to continue like progressing. Now, the thing is, when it hits 100%, the special event starts, and you can go in and try to stop it. If enough people don't go in and try to stop the event from happening, one of the relays gets blown up. And you have one less place to um, go and hang out. So you kind of want to do one side or the other, depending on what kind of rewards there are. Also, keep in mind the bottom part, too. So the little spider web is your syndicates, which are your faction or missions that earn you extra reward in reputation. And you have void fishers. Now these are the ones where you open up void relics, those little relics you have. Now they can go pretty much anywhere. They can go, let's see, this one's on Earth, Mars, there's Jupiter, Phobos, Neptune, and the void. It'll show you the level, what kind of mission it is, and what kind of, um, what kind of fisher and relic you're supposed to take. And finally... I see you! These are your... Um... Fuck. What are they called? Sorties. So a sortie is an extra hard mission, and it's done in series. And then you get one of these random rewards. And you can do this once a day. Period. Once you do it, that's it. That's your. Th that's pretty much your only daily thing. So you can get a Riven mod, boosters, you can get some blueprints, a legendary core, you can get a statue, and that's all random. Huh. Okay. So that's all I can think of. I mean, with the other ones, so the junctions, it'll list off everything you need to do. If anyone needs help in doing those, I'd be more than happy enough to help you guys finish missions and stuff. I'm I'm really trying not to, like, power grind you go, guys through it, because I want you guys to actually enjoy going through some of the missions. And there's a storyline. There is a storyline. 
Once you once you hit the first couple of missions, you're gonna it's it's kind of like a WTF. My mind is blown kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you got a series, Ceres. Let's see to Jupiter. Let's see. Okay, defeat a prosecutor. That's a special kind of enemy. Okay, ten minutes or more on a survival mission. Okay, defeat. Uh, complete, oh yeah, and complete the um, Archwing quest. Okay. So I think that's everything now I can think of. I'll put like little timestamps in the description so you guys can navigate to them at your whimsy. Okay. Again, if I missed anything or you have any other questions of what's going on or how to do stuff, just let me know. I'll be happy to do another video. I might just do another video just on Cetus and Earth itself because that's actually a huge part all by on its own. It's just a giant free roam nonsense bit. <sighs> Once again, my name is Kuden. I hope you guys, this helps everyone with Warframe a little bit because the game itself is fun. It's just a tiny little minutia about the bits and pieces of trying to get stuff to work and how stuff works together that they do not a great part of explaining. Now, if this helped you out, just drop me a like, subscribe, because I'm vain and pathetic like that. And I'll see everybody later.